Guys, welcome to another episode of Northwest Fishing Secrets. We are at a small lake and we're gonna try and catch some fish today and do a catch and cook together. I'm seeing trout surfacing all over the place. I mean, there's a lot of trout here. So we've got a couple different setups that we're gonna try and catch them with. Down here, I've just got one of my little, little home built uh, bullet lures. Since I have fished here last, I have been told that the trout on this lake love worms. So on our other rod, what we have is also just a little, this is actually just a little one piece ugly stick. Then I have a slip float on here. Actually, it's just a little fill bobber. Now down on the business end here, what we've got is a gamakatsu panfish hook. And for bait, we just have a night crawler that is slid all the way down on the hook like so. And uh, this is our trout presentation on the bobber setup. So uh, let's go ahead and start out with the bullet lure. Then we're gonna switch over to the bobber setup with the worm. If you are brand new, feel free to subscribe. I upload videos like this every single week, catching cooks and all sorts of crazy stuff here in the Northwest. So uh, that's enough said, I'm seeing fish surface. Intro's over, let's catch something. Just thought I'd announce the, uh, the first cast officially. All right, so you guys see all these logs uh, right here? Uh, it's good and bad. Good is that there's a lot of fish probably hiding in those logs. The bad, however, is that those logs, of course, present good snags for me to lose my precious little bullet lure. Don't want that happening, so we're gonna be a little bit careful. I do have diving goggles with me, uh, just in case we were to get snagged, uh, that I could swim down there and save my lure, or for general swimming and fish scouting. Oh man, look at this log right here. I can't help but just jig it a little bit with that lure and see if maybe there's a hungry bass down there that's ripe for the taking. Oh, a fish just jumped right in front of me. That can only be a good sign, right? So if you see a fish jump in front of you, make sure to cast over it. Don't cast right on top of the fish because uh, you might spook the fish. So always cast over it a little bit and then reel into it. Guys, check it out, I didn't even see it, but there's a goose actually right behind me here, breeding on that log. So we don't wanna to get too close to her. I actually am closer than I wanna be. Uh, so we're gonna get out of here. Happy breeding. <laughs> So you can set your depth of the bobber by just sliding the stop along your fishing line. So we'll start here with a good, maybe three and a half to four feet deep. Just cast it over there in that corner and see what happens. Oh, we might have something playing with our bobber here, guys. It's just wiggling a little, little funny, you know what I mean? Ooh, there is a trout or something right there. Yeah, something just went after that worm. We got a fish on guys. That's a bobber down, baby. What the heck is this? Oh, it's a small rainbow. Whoa. Oh. Oh, there he is. Look at that. Come on, come on. Oh, he's not ready yet. <laughs> he's not ready. Oh, that's crazy. I did not expect a trout to bite here, guys. <laughs> Oh, 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 don't want to lose him. That's when you can lose him, guys. Ah, oh, but he's in the net. <laughs> Heck yeah. Uh, this beautiful little pan-sized trout decided to join us for today's catch and cook. We're gonna bonk him just to get him out of his misery and also so we don't lose him. Um, and then we'll see if we can't maybe catch like one or two more. Uh, but that's a good start, guys. We're about, I'd say probably 45 minutes into fishing. 
wow, super stoked. That's actually the first fish I've ever caught in this lake here. This place is like 12 minutes from my house. Now my last trout video that I just uploaded when we caught those giant cutthroat trout, uh, someone commented and said I need a bigger bonker. <laughs> I saw that in the comments, I thought that was hilarious. I still don't have a bigger bonker, so we're just gonna use these little pliers again. Give them a nice sharp blow. There we go, and he is out. So I don't have any like bag to throw fish to keep him cool. But that's okay, we're gonna eat him here today anyways. I'm not that worried about it. We're just gonna throw him in the front of the boat. Look at that, that worm is still uh, pretty much ready to roll. How about we just slide that worm right back down and just get a little repeat action here. All right, so we're just gonna keep everything the same. Now I know a lot of you have been asking about my kayak setup. Uh, this year is a, oh, oh, oh. Guys, I'm sorry, right as I was about to talk about the kayak setup, we got another bite here. Ooh, look at this little guy. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and net number two here. He's just a little guy. Oh, <laughs> he's still got energy. <laughs> come here, come here, come here. Oh, oh geez, he's jumping. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, there we go. There we go. Jeez, guys, this is uh, this is the secret here. Is just uh, these trout are just loving the bobber with worms. Let's get that hook out of there. There we go. Oh, look at this little guy here. So he's just a little smaller than that first one that we caught. Um, geez, what do you guys think? Do we keep him or let him go? Let's let's go ahead and just let this one here go. And we'll see, he wasn't hooked bad or anything, not injured. So let's see if uh, how he does if we just let him right here. There we go, and he swims off. Guys, how cool is that? That's trout number two within about an hour of fishing here. What were we saying right before that fish bit? I think I was just mentioning the kayak setup that I have. It's a feel-free lure, 11.5, so it's 11 and a half feet long. Uh, it has a nicely adjustable seat. It is made for fishing. Uh, it's a heavy uh, beast. It's about 100, it's a little over 100 pounds, I believe. And then over here, I've got uh, just a storage pod in the front. And uh, down here, you can pull this whole unit out and you can see uh, there's a hole there. And I could put a pedal drive uh, down there, but what I'll probably do is put a depth finder uh, on here. Um, and in the back, I just have a big storage area right there. The cool thing about this kayak is that it does have a wheel uh, back there in the keel. Uh, very useful, actually. You're, I mean, when you're lugging around big, heavy kayaks, what do you guys think? Should we try and get a third fish on the same worm? The worm still looks pretty good. Challenge accepted. <laughs> I don't know how much that shank is hidden, but this still looks okay. Guys, a trout just surfaced right there. I'm like trying to set up a camera for right here. But I just, man, a trout just surfaced there. We're gonna, oh, there he is again, there he is again. All right, what do you guys think? Are we gonna get him? Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, 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 that's a bobber down, baby. Oh, that's a better trout, guys. This is a better trout. Oh, he's pulling some drag, too. Ooh, we might have number two for the catch and cook, baby. There he is, there he is. Okay, I don't want to lose my tripod. <laughs> tripod in the boat first. Oh, he jumped. Come on. Come on. Ooh, this guy's got energy, guys. Come here, come here, come here. Oh. <laughs> That's three for three on the same worm. <laughs> oh, do we still have the worm? Oh, we lost the worm, guys. I was gonna keep going with that worm. That's a that's a good size trout. We're gonna keep this one here. Ooh, yeah, look at that. He's got energy. He's got energy. Not a trophy, not as big as those cutthroats that we caught in the, caught in the last episode there. But uh, this is a good eater size fish. Not trophy size, but pan size. Uh, rainbow trout. Oh yeah, I can feel him shaking. He's out. All right, add him to this guy here. He's 
Uh, they're about the same size. That second one might be a little fatter that we just caught there. <laughs> guys, the trap bite's on fire right now. What is this? All right, guys, we are on this tree. What I'm just doing is walking over here. And all I wanted to do was set up a camera over here. Oh, there we go, there we go. One's playing with it, there we go. Come on, come on. And that's a bobber down. Oh, he's tiny, he's tiny. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's just a little baby, guys. Look at that little guy down there. <laughs> oh, he, he's got some jump in him, though. Let's go ahead and here, let's just touch the leader. If we touch the leader, there we go. That's an official landing of the fish. Here, and we'll just wet our hands so we don't hurt him because we're going to release this little guy here. Come here, little guy. Look at that little tiny, uh, another rainbow trout hooked right up there through the nose again, just like all of them today. And there we go. Let's go ahead and let this little guy swim off though. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm pretty sure that we could easily catch another trout right here, but I wanted to just switch up the scenery a little bit. So we're going to just check out one more spot uh, on the lake. Ah, look at that, guys. We got a little stray Gatorade bottle here that needs to be picked up. Every plastic bottle deserves a home, right? <laughs> there we go. Got him. All right, guys, we're gonna do an experiment now. And what we're gonna do is just let the bobber go down because some people in the comments have mentioned before, let the bobber drain longer. Let the, like, don't set the hook until the fish starts pulling at your pole. Um, so we're gonna try that. We're just gonna like let the fish do what it wants to do with that worm down there. And if it lets go, it's gonna let go. And, and if it just swallows the darn thing and swims off, then I guess that's what it's gonna do. Uh, so let's see what happens. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Oh man, this is so hard not to set the hook. He's just grabbing it, grabbing it, swimming. Bobber's down, bobber is down. It's down, it's just still down. Oh, there it comes again, there's the bobber. Oh, it's down again, oh, and he's on the pole. <laughs> oh, 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 he's a jumper. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. But, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, he's such a jumper. Guys, that's crazy. That was like, I was just saying that we're doing that and I put the GoPro hat back on and a second later, this vicious little trout here goes for it. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. <laughs> All right. Smaller trout, I probably would have let it go but it swallowed the hook as I pretty much predicted. So that's probably the trade-off um, if you guys, here, let's take a peek at him. Uh, the trade-off, if you guys let that bobber really drain, completely swallowed that sucker. Man, guys, fishing does not get a whole lot better than that, I have to say. It, uh, so glad I came out here. Yeah, I consider that a huge success. So let's go ahead and head back to the van, and uh, I've got something delicious I want to cook these guys up with. Uh, so I will see you guys there. All right guys, now that the kitchen is all set up, the first thing we gotta do is gut our trout. And today what we're gonna use is this Gerber mini cleaver. Uh, I've just been aching to get one of these little things. I'll drop a link to uh, Amazon where I got it. It's only like, I think 20 or 30 bucks or something like that. And this thing is razor sharp straight out of the package. So I felt like today we're gonna use this to gut a trout. Uh, so what we're gonna do is just start by the butthole. Now, after you made that cut right there, the easiest way to gut a small trout is you just go behind the head here, kind of at a backward angle, cut down to the spine, and then all you do is grab the trout by the head there, hold on to the rest of the fish, and check it out. All the guts just came out with the head.
And if you guys are brand new to my channel, well, this is what I do. I travel around with a camper van, catch fish, cook them up with you guys. Uh, I upload videos like this every single week. So feel free to subscribe. That way you guys do not miss my brand new episodes. And I've been itching to do this, by the way, guys, since this is a cleaver. There we go. Tails off. <laughs> One thing we're gonna do as well is just score the trout's skin. It's fine if it goes down the meat a little bit too. Uh, what that's gonna do is apparently prevent uh, the fish from curling up, plus the seasonings will soak in a little better. And speaking of seasonings, we're gonna keep it really, really simple. Just some of this delicious uh, Danish sea salt here. And then just some black pepper. All we gotta do is just give it a little bit of some vegetable oil on there. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> oh, guys, I just totally failed at uh, filming this. I forgot to turn on the uh, camera before flipping the trout and adding oyster mushrooms, wild oyster mushrooms. I collected these yesterday uh, with a subscriber. His name is Nate. He is a nature photographer and a big Instagrammer. So these are the first wild oyster mushrooms that I've ever collected. Uh, so just because we're gonna go ahead and just add these couple there in the pan, that way, I, that way you guys can't say I didn't show you adding the oyster mushrooms. All right, the trout is done. Now that the trout is done cooking, it's really easy to remove these bones. Look at that, come right out. Ooh, little little skin snack here. Mm. Oh man, delicious. And it's also really easy to just pull this little fin here and these two little belly fins. Now what we're gonna try and do is just pull that uh, meat right off of the bones. That's always how you know a trout is done. Look at that, just came right off. Now look at this. Right, and the mushrooms are all done, so we're just gonna dump them on there as well. Just a bunch of shredded cheese that we're gonna, we ain't gonna be shy here, boys and girls. Not at all. All right guys, so that tortilla and the cheese, they have made love now and have become one. Look at this. Guys, look at this monster of a burrito. That looks absolutely bomb. I can't wait to dig into this. But just before we do, I want to thank all of you guys. We just hit a million views total on the channel. Uh, this channel would be nothing without all of my awesome subscribers. So thank you, thank you all. Uh, as a refreshment here with this uh, burrito. Oh, there we go. We're gonna have a little uh, Safeway signature uh, lemon seltzer water. They say lemon goes good with fish, right? Now the cheese on the inside of this is nice and crusty. If you've never cooked cheese like that, it's actually amazing. It crusts up and then comes off of the pan really easily. So let's go ahead and wrap this little guy here. Ooh yeah, a little crunchy, that's for sure. All right guys, look at that burrito. You know what they say, here goes nothing. Mm. Look at that oyster mushrooms falling out.
Mm. There's so much happening in my mouth right now. Oh, those mushrooms are so earthy. Oyster mushrooms are amazing. And I have to say, I think the wild ones are better than the store-bought ones. And they just have more of the earthy flavor because the store-bought ones, I believe, are grown on like mushroom blocks. These ones came straight out of like the wood in the woods. Mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Guys, that was once again an amazing success. So we will see all of you next week for the next fishing adventure. Who knows where we'll be? I've got some good things planned. And until then, you all know it. Fish on, baby. <laughs>